bipartisan committee to probe depreciation of the city. As finance minister dismissed claims, the city's recent alarming depreciation is because of weak economic fundamentals. The city has performed better over the last two years than when compared specifically to 2012 to 2016. Meanwhile, the minority in parliament is accusing the finance minister of misleading the house. I mean, I can understand if this is coming from a foot soldier power. But for you to come from the minister of finance is absolutely unacceptable. Mr. Minister, you actually misled the house. This is Top Story with Evans Mensa. And Top Story is always brought to you by Bond Savings and Loans. Your success, our passion, Gassem, the nation builder, Vodafone. The future is exciting, ready, and nationwide medical health insurance, your healthcare family. Government is tonight setting up a bipartisan committee that will probe the depreciation of the city. And on the night, on the day when the finance minister was in parliament declaring mission accomplished when it comes to exiting the IMF, we are also learning, according to the finance minister uh, tonight, that the depreciation of the city that we've seen uh, in this first quarter is not down to weak economic fundamentals. However, the finance minister points to uh, speculation as one of the key reasons why the city has depreciated to the levels that we've seen over the last few weeks. We've been interrogating the finance minister's statement to parliament today that touched on a few things, including the formal completion of the uh, IMF program, the historic, what he says is a historic 3 billion euro bond issuance, and the recent developments on the foreign exchange market markets, plus uh, the visit of the World Bank VP to Africa. Uh, we'll be interrogating all this with the minority and the majority size of the House. But first, listen to Ken Foyata today on the floor of Parliament addressing the recent uh, depreciation of the city that we've witnessed. The city suffered some turbulence during the first quarter of this year, mainly as a result of a confluence of factors, including pressure on the current account as a result of income transfers by corporates, as well as seasonal demands by importers. Portfolio reversals by investors in our country's debt. See statistical adjustment to the exchange rate calculation by the Bank of Ghana in efforts to improve market transparency. And four, uncertainties on the future of Ghana's conclusion of the IMF program. Mr. Speaker, this turbulence happened despite the strong economic fundamentals and improvements in our balance of payment. Mr. Speaker, it is clear from the data that the appreciation of the city was not due to weak economic fundamentals, but rather a combination of structural rigidities and the apparent speculative behavior of portfolio investors and market participants. It is also noteworthy that while this is a challenge, the city has, however, performed better over the last two years than when compared specifically to 2012 to 2016. Well, the finance minister then lays out uh, what he says is a plan by government to arrest the uh, perennial regular depreciation of the city uh, times in the year. One of the key proposals that, uh, well, directives that the president has given uh, for the finance minister to implement includes the setting up of a bipartisan committee to probe uh, the real reasons why the city depreciates. Currently, the city has witnessed substantial gains with the measures we have put in place. Based on the existing sound macroeconomic fundamentals, we anticipate the stability of the city going forward. Indeed, the city has appreciated by 5.12% in March 2019 alone, as against a depreciation of 2.7% in the same period last year. It is this success, Mr. Speaker, that we need to build on and put in place the structures to strengthen the resilience of the city against its major trading currencies. Mr. Speaker, we recognize the need to take the following steps. A, enhance the transparency of our foreign exchange market to minimize information asymmetry and panic buying of currency by businesses and the public when there are seasonal blips in the currency. Mr. Speaker, the President has directed that I investigate the structural causes 
for the depreciation of the city and to propose measures to address the situation. The governor and I will put a bipartisan committee together to proceed immediately. So will the minority side of the House join this bipartisan committee? We'll find that out shortly. Well, on the floor, because this was a statement, it allowed the minority side to also have their say on this. Uh, Fifi Kwete, uh, who himself used to be at the Finance Ministry, uh, well, took strong reservation to suggestions by the Finance Minister uh, that the IMF bailout, that, uh, you know, of course, he, he took exception to the description of it as a bailout, and also the suggestion that he believes the Finance Minister had, may have put out there that he has simply gone to the IMF uh, to get uh, 900 million dollars. In fact, the finance minister spent some time attacking the record of the John Mahama administration. As a part of the statement read, uh, he says, Mr. Speaker, Ghanaians who have been the victims of poor economic decisions of the past know all so well that the healing process has not been easy. It has been austere. It has been tough. It has been restraining. But it was necessary. It was necessary because what had been broken had to be fixed by the Akufuado government. And as you can imagine, Fifi Kwete took strong exception to some of these claims. I will be, I will be surprised if the Minister of Finance truly does believe that it is because of some four trillion and thirty million dollars that this country actually went into the nine I mean, I can understand if this is coming from a food soldier, however. But for you to come from the Minister of Finance is absolutely unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable. Because anybody, anybody does know, everybody does know that over the period 2015 and 2016, even the amount of investment that has been done in this country, investment, for example, that brought Dunso to an end, is way past 930 million dollars. You don't consider this 930 million misery money to be the reason why Ghana will be dying. So obviously, Mr. Minister, you actually misled the house. Uh, joining me uh, in the studio is the ranking member on the Finance Committee in Parliament, former Deputy Finance Minister, Case Atoforsen. Mr. Atoforsen, I'm grateful for your time here on Thank Top you. Story. Thank on the phone with us is uh, the Chairman of the Finance Committee, uh, Dr. Mark Esibe Yeboa. Uh, Doc, thank you for your time here on, on Top Story. Yes. I, I want to start with you. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, well, there's, a, there's a directive that the finance minister announced today, which is, which is pretty novel because it's the first time I've heard uh, that as a solution uh, to the depreciation of the city, which is a setting up of a bipartisan committee to probe the, you know, the, the depreciation and, and find solutions to it. Why do we need a bipartisan committee to probe into a, a matter that is so obvious? Um. I would think uh, we've grappled with this issue over the years, this volatility in our currency, and this would be just one of a number of solutions that uh, that the ministry and the government will be looking at. Yeah, there's a committee, bipartisan, if it is, to probe and offer solutions. This will be just one of uh, many, uh, many solutions available to the government. Uh, Mr. Tufosing is here, your, your ranking on that committee. What do you make of this proposal? I, 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 let me say that um, for me and for the minority, if we are to call upon to serve Ghana in any capacity, obviously in the interest of the country, we will be able to offer our um, competence or our advice in, in that regard. But let me say that I personally think that it's a waste of time and resources because the depreciation of the currency, see the depreciation of the currency concern, what we are seeing is only the symptom. It is not the disease. We know what the disease is. And in fact, everybody else, anyone, if you speak to anyone else in this country, we know what is actually causing the problems of the currency depreciation. Two things. One, we all know that the investment in the rare sector, that at least will provide us some import substitution 
it's not actually happening in the economy. We are not investing heavily in areas of agriculture, areas that we can easily not mm. import, but rather we are, we are investing so much on consumption. That is one of the problems. Again, we are actually borrowing a bit too much to the extent that foreigners' participation in our economy is a bit so much to the extent that all the forex that we end up correcting, a chunk of them is actually used in servicing loans. Mm. So you see the capital account, you see some capital uh, amount of money we use in, in servicing our debt, an amount of money we use in actually um, paying some of this debt itself is a problem for us as a country. So we all know where the problem is coming from. I don't think that we need to now sit and find what the causes are and then um, and come out with solution. But also, Evans. So, um, so this bipartisan committee, is, as far as I call, is not necessary. It's not necessary. I, I, it's, it's waste of time and resources. Um, um, Evans, let me say, it's the same finance minister who came to parliament today, virtually lambasting the minority and the and the previous NDC, mm. saying that they are incompetent, they are that and that. If we are that incompetent, why are you calling us now to come and offer some some form of su- 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 suggestions? So I think that the whole idea, the statement itself, um, I think is not properly thought through because it's it's it's, it's everywhere. Let's it will not solve the problem. Uh, Mrs. Well. Mo, you have something to say to that because I want to go to the substance of the things you said quickly. Hello, Dr. Makisibeba? Yes. Yes. I don't know if you listened to your ranking. He says the committee is unnecessary because the solutions are known, the causes are known. And he says that, well, the minority has been branded as incompetent, and yet you want the, the outside to be part of a committee to find solutions. As I stated earlier, um, I think this would be, uh, this can be um, tried, but um, if and they don't want to come on board. Let's just move on. There are the real issues that we where we can speak to. This is a suggestion, and if the minority don't want to be part of this, we shouldn't begrudge them. Let, let's go to the substance then. Let's st- stay with the exchange rate situation that we have, which is one of the key things that Prime Minister talked about today. He says today that, yes, he admits the CD has depreciated quite alarmingly over the last few weeks, and, yes, we've seen some gains, but he says the, the depreciation cannot be down to weak economic fundamentals. However, we know we were in this country uh, two short years ago when the carrying chair of the economic management team was emphatic that if the fundamentals of the economy are weak, the exchange rate will expose you. The exchange rate is depreciating, yet this current government says it cannot be because of economic fundamentals. Double standards? Um, Evans, have you looked at the data? If you have looked at the data closely, you would also observe that uh, in a week, all of last week, we saw major swings, the currency appreciating. It must tell you that something is fundamentally wrong with what we are seeing. This is not normal. Now, when the uh, vice president, the head of the economic management team, says that if the fundamentals are weak, the currency would expose you, he's right. Now, you, are not, you don't only look at the exchange rate. There's a number of economic indicators. Basically, you want to see inflation, interest rate, and exchange rate trend in the same direction. If inflation is declining, if interest rates are going down, you want to see the currency also appreciate. Now, we've seen inflation come down drastically. The monetary policy uh, rate is down. Uh, we've also seen interest rates decline. So I ask myself, why is it that there is some... Uh, upswing. Why is it that the currency is depreciating when the other indicator that should go together in, in, in the same direction are performing otherwise? So these latest upswings, downswings tell me that something is fundamentally wrong which defies economic theory. What can that possibly be if it's not that, the obvious that we know? So, so now we come to that point that let, let us investigate this. Let us uh, put the politics aside and think through it and see so how come a currency depreciates so much. Then in a matter of a week, it also comes down. I saw 4.7 sometime last week. I said, I, I, this is unbelievable. What is happening? So there must be something that we have not averted our minds to in the past. And I think this is time for us to uh, look to the data and uh, really understand uh, the happenings in the economy all over again. I find it curious that with the strong team that you have, economy, your good self, the Bank of Ghana, the finance minister, you cannot figure this out? Ever. <laughs> when the currency appreciates, as it did last week, in a matter of a week, that defies economic theory, okay? A currency that has had been depreciating so fast, and then in a matter of a week, 
regardless of how uh, uh, how fast you pump um, forex into the system, we shouldn't be seeing these swings. That that volatility, okay, the, the fluctuation, it is not normal. Here's another for sake. The finance minister today before you in Parliament said that the city has appreciated 5.12% in March alone as against 2.71% in the same period last year. This is an improvement in spite of what we see. The facts point to a, a good a good turn of the city. Evans, um, March is actually coming to an end. Yeah. The city depreciated so much in the course of March. It started gaining some appreciation also within the match, the net effect does not mean the city itself has to be appreciated by 5% in March. And again, in the last few days, in fact, three days, today is the third day, the city has started inching up again, going up again. The evidence is there for everybody else to see. You can Google it, you can check from Bloomberg website. It's inching up. But even, I would have thought that the finance minister appearing before parliament would have changed the way he presented the statement. Why? For me, I think it's wasted opportunity. He has wasted such a wonderful opportunity to, to, to signal some credibility to the market. Two things. The way I was expecting this statement to be, like it shouldn't have been a political statement. Was it? Yes, it was a political statement. He spent quite a number of time lambasting the opposition, creating impression that they were useless. But I thought that that is unnecessary because I, my opinion, they should have concentrated on what is actually confronting us as a country and how to deal with he it. Was, he was simply presenting facts. facts. Pre -pre presenting what sort of Talking facts? about Pre the city depreciation under your time, the currency, painting a picture for us to see it, where we were before, it, where we are. You see, you, 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 you want all of us to come on board. Okay, he's calling for bipartisan probe. One, he, he want, he's talking of speculation and how can we deal with it. True. I would have thought that you rally the nation behind you, not to divide it further. So you rally the nation behind you and then also send a very good signal to the investing community. Those are the people that are actually exiting the market and so the city is depreciating. This statement failed to address the fundamental concerns of the investors who are exiting the market. You are actually signaling um, um, fiscal expansion. We've raised that issue. We've sent signals to you that that is not enough. I thought this statement would deal with that. Your monetary policy itself is not consistent to what is actually happening. What are you talking about? These are major concerns that we have raised. Mm. So I would have thought that the minister responsible for finance addressing all of us as a nation, addressing parliament means addressing the nation. He would have used the opportunity, one, to unite the nation, and two, signal policy credibility post-IMF to the investor community to calm nerves, let them stay in the economy, and to be able to tell us, as the people's representative, some of the steps they are putting in place to stabilize the currency, and not to come and spend time and uh, lambasting the opposition and talking about things that I see it as unnecessary at this stage in our politics, because what we need is to stabilize the currency, give some hope to people out there, because the, uh, the city actually depreciates its effect everybody out there in the country. Mm. So that is where we are, and I think that it's, 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 a, it's a missed opportunity. Uh, Dr. Marcus but today in Parliament, you spoke first for the minor, majority side, and, and I'm coming to the IMF question. And the finance minister today declared mission accomplished as far as the exit is concerned. And in his submission, he, and, and I guess that's where we've had a minority to take issue, he draws the point about where we've come from, the Muhammad administration to where we are today and and makes a clear point substantively that this government have turned things around but also for the first time he lays out what government is doing so we don't return to the IMF program your point was to quote two documents one under the previous administration one under the current administration all altered by the IMF and what, what was the point of that um Evans, I, I think uh, uh, that should be the highlight of, of, of the minister's uh, submissions today. We went to the fund April 3, 2015, at the time the IMF issued a statement, and they described the state of our economy. And those, uh, 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 there's a public document so everyone can access. Our economy was in tatters. The economy was underperforming, and we ran to the IMF. As a matter of fact, we told the IMF that we are coming to you for policy credibility. So we went to them so that we could gain some credibility. Now, fast forward to March 20, 2019. The same IMF issues another statement. And this time, 
they categorically state that all the macro fundamentals have improved. Inflation, uh, GDP growth, the deficit. And so I sought to compare where we were under John Mahama 2015, an economy that was in tatters, and then we have you put a team together led by the vice president, the finance minister, in a matter of two years. And this is the IMF that the Honorable Atuforsen writes to whenever there is some disagreement in the country. This is not Ken Ufayata, put him out of the equation. This is the verdict of the fund. And those documents are, are there. Let him deny or let him challenge the verdict put out by the ISM. IMF. Without a force. It's interesting uh, when I hear my chairman um, trying to um, create impressions that... Um, um, yes, they've exited the IMF program, so um, all is well. Um, um, my brother, you can exit the IMF program, but you will certainly go back there if you don't put your house in order. They say they have. You see, um, um, I don't think they have. But they laid out a series I, I, of I, measures. I, I, I don't think they have. If you go out there to go and borrow for euro bonds, you bring in 2 billion Ghana's US dollars equivalent. You claim you are going to use that to finance capital expenditure in your budget. But in the budget itself, all what you have, in, as long as capital expenditure is concerned, is nothing but only 372 million US dollars. What it means is that you are going to borrow that kind of money for the likes of consumption. In fact, if you are to drill down, what they are telling us is that they are borrowing that money to do the likes of investment in special development initiative, building KVIPs, and doing other things. I think I've made that point today. I made that point again. Nobody challenged that. Again, in last year, they went out there to the bond market, borrowed huge sums of monies. We were told that they are going to use 750 million US dollars, obviously for the purposes of financing capital expenditure. But actually, the amount of money they're using, uh, as long as capital expenditure is concerned, is only about 150 million US dollars. What it means is that, in the end, almost 600 million US dollars was used for consumption. So you are borrowing out there for consumption. You are signaling to all of us that you want to do uh, what do you call fiscal uh, 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 consolidation? But in the end, your policies is telling all of us, including the investor community, that you are actually engaging in expansionary fiscal policies. That is not the end. You hear them say that they want to exit IMF program for the purposes of um, um, making sure the government can spend more and that kind of thing. If you hear that kind of in, um, statement coming from the government, I, I beg to say that them exiting IMF program does not necessarily mean that all is well. And so, uh, if we are not careful. We will return but the IMF, IMF that same IMF endorses yes. this government's approach. Oh, um, and compared to your approach, the IMF says this approach is better, mm -hmm. more sustainable. As you read before, before you today, um, quoting um, from the IMF the, own the, document, the IMF had not projected the approach going forward. Mm. They they spoke about approach under their supervision. True. Okay. They spoke about approach and their approach under and supervision. True. And they say and under they, the they, two they, administrations, they, they, they also They believe us. this government is managing it better. Well, please, IMF never said that. They never said. But the evidence, as he read before no, Parliament no, he today, never. I I, I beg. I, um, I challenge him to read that statement that IMF has said that this government. Does does a thumbs up yeah. in terms of meeting the yes. uh, but, requirements and but, indicators? But, but, but I can also read to you sections of IMF reviews that gave the president John Dramani Mohammed's administration thumbs up under the IMF review. And so I can tell you that that has been done various times in IMF programs, and, and it's, it's always mm. there. You see, we, this is not the first time we've entered an IMF program. This is not the first time we've exited an IMF, uh, an IMF program. We started 1966, mm. post-Nkrumah. We went back again in um, 1972 under uh, Dr. Buzia, and then we continued mm. the 16 times. It doesn't mean that we've exited today, so we are not going back. All what I can caution is that, let me also say, mm -hmm. um, um, even finally, that um, it is important for all of us to advert our minds to the fact that Ghana is still a member of the IMF. True. Our books will still be open for IMF as long as Article 4 is concerned. True. So IMF will be coming in, they will be accessing all of us, and then the verdict will be out there for... for very for, finally, for very quickly, were you, were you, are you satisfied with the measures that the finance minister uh, laid out today uh, to prevent us returning um, to the IMF in the future? There was a series of them, Fiscal Responsibility Act, which has been passed already, uh, the Financial uh, Responsibility Advisory Council, the Economic Policy Coordinating Committee co-chaired by the Finance Minister and others, also the Z uh, Zero Central Bank Financing with sanctions for finance ministers who exceed, etc. Confident that these measures are enough? Empty. Very empty. Zero central bank financing, we introduced it. <laughs> I was a member of the... You, you, did, no, you no, didn't we, observe it no, religiously. No, we, we did. We did. Always. And nobody can challenge that. The NDC observed it religiously. That is something that we implemented, and we implemented it well. Again, um, um, Economic Policy Coordinating Committee 
under our leadership and at the Ministry of Finance and Central Bank, we were holding those meetings. Mm. So empty. So, 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 but so if, empty. You, if you introduce so them, me, so if you introduce nothing. them and they have it here is it, and they want to, it, it, then, it, then they, that they works. New. They are not new. They are things that already exist and the city is depreciating. Okay. As we speak, the currency is still depreciating. The last three days is going back to where we left it. I'm, gra the problem I'm grateful that you joined us. Uh, Dr. Makasibaywa, these uh, measures that we had today from the finance minister, confident that this, these are the measures we need uh, to avert a return to the IMF in the future? Yeah, I, I think uh, everybody should be excited about the direction that this government is taking this country. Um, Evans, um, we've seen uh, reversibility, and the minister is saying that I'm putting in policies that will ensure irreversibility. One is the Fiscal Responsibility Act. And my colleague, Honorable Atto Fawcett, joined us as a committee to pass that law. It says that the deficit uh, be capped at 5%. We've seen deficits of 9%. We've seen deficits 11%. And you have a government which says that I'm going to put restraints on myself. I'm going to an election next year, but the deficit at uh, enshrined in law should not exceed 5%. The president has set up a fiscal responsibility council, a financial stability council. This thing about zero finance is the NDC doing it. It was a prior action from the IMF. It was the IMF that imposed um, zero financing on us. And we are saying that now that we have exited the fund program, we are going to sign a memorandum of understanding, the Ministry of Finance and the Central Bank, to continue along that path. As it's in our hands now, we can see that no, to hell with zero financing, but we are continuing with zero financing. This um, uh, coordination between the central bank and the Ministry of Finance, now it is in law. The uh, regulations governing the public financial management access that there shall be a coordinating council co-chaired by the Bank of Ghana and uh, uh, Governor and the Minister for Finance. So I, I, I think we have put limits on ourselves. We, we are prepared to be restrained by the laws that we have in here and never again to we see deficit numbers that we saw in, in, in the past few years. I'm grateful that you joined us. That is the chair of the Finance Committee in Parliament, Dr. Mark Esibeyebo. Earlier, you had the uh, vice chair, uh, sorry, the ranking member, uh, former Deputy Finance Minister, uh, Kaisal Atafos. And Top Story is always brought to you by Bond uh, Savings and Loans. Your success are passion. Also, Gassem, the nation builder, Vodafone, the future is exciting, ready. Nationwide medical health insurance, your healthcare family. Here's what people are saying about the GCB Easy Pick. It just makes sense. It just makes sense. It just makes sense. It 